Hey, <laughs> welcome, welcome to the Hexacon tabletop role playing games. Do we have anybody in the lobby tonight? I need my players to tell me. Pika Julie. Yeah, we got Woo! That's four, it. Months. four months. Four months. Hey, uh, incredible. Very hello, much. Hello. We appreciate it. Oh, oh my much. gosh. Well, hello, Internet. Uh, my name is Brent. And I'm going to be your dungeon master tonight for Avatar <laughs> Legends by Magpie Games. And my campaign is Avatar The Age of the <laughs> A post apocalyptic avatar game. Um, thousand years in the future after the legendary Korra has vanished into ancient history as perhaps the last avatar on record. Since then, our new team avatar as they discovered that a dinosaur was the new avatar uh, have traveled through a world beset by a zombie ninja army who are riding and controlling dinosaurs with four avatars of vatu the evil spirit come once again at the helm of some sort of a nameless organization um that is commanded all by something named the CEO. Um, it's a little bit of a mystery and we don't quite know what's happening. But last session, we found ourselves in the middle of a pitched battle. Uh, as you can see here on the map, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. We are at the site uh, where Republic City used to be, uh, what is now known as the Spirit Council is where everybody uh oh we have a technical problem apparently shadim and shire switched oh, on the layout it's good it's good it's, it's we good guys we get what right. about the plot twist? thank you julie and this siege of the council was by a horde of ninjas their reinforcements to uh this ninja undead army um, were cut off by the players in the session previous, but in this session they had to face off against some swarms of ninja um, as they battled one of these negatars. Um, I, I don't know what you call an evil avatar uh, in this universe. I like the negatar. Um, the ravatar versus the vatatar. Don't Vat laugh. <laughs> um, we'll come up with something a little bit better as we have to keep referencing them. You say the negatar? The negatar. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. Does anyone have the room flashback? The negavax. No. <clears throat> <laughs> the the dark knight a master at crystal bending but you wouldn't know it from how the action economy was in shambles uh as all of our players focused all of their energy uh on really bashing down this villain uh but leaving the other one unchecked uh if not for coloni stepping up stepping in and healing and maybe even taking the place of hey in the fight uh, and keeping the necromancer at bay. Um, the Dark Knight was swallowed up in the end by an erupting volcano as Jet Shen Hu, CJ's character, uh, attuned with the spirit, let it take over his body, and from w both within and without, it crushed its prison finally, releasing its spiritual energy and bringing a climactic <laughs> cinematic end uh, to this, the ongoing siege. Now, only one of the Negatars was taken care of as everyone was working <laughs> for the safety of the Spirit Council. I think we got to come up with something else. I'm going to leave that all to you. Discuss amongst yourselves. I'm going to keep calling until somebody says something. Um, <laughs> at the end of last session, we found ourselves in the ancient meeting hall of the Spirit Council. Uh, it seems that the ruins of a long past Republic City are intermixed with roots, vines, branches, and you can see that growth and life have flourished, blossomed, died, flourished again in a never-ending cycle here as the stone and buildings have become a part of everything. In the middle um, is a sort of plaza that may have once been Republic City Square um, that has now 
been turned into a sort of meeting ground with these giant thrones, each in a different fashion, uh, for the archfey that aided at this battle, who preside over this council. Um, no one here except Coloni has big ties to the council. Uh, Shen, you would know uh, generally that the Archfey choose amongst themselves who has to sit on the council. Um, and so it changes every once in a while. Um, it's kind of a big thing when one of the Archfey changes for humans. For the Fey, it's just like, you know, they're doing a term. Uh, essentially, it's like they had to draw straws and, oh, no, it's my turn to come to the human world uh, and have to talk with humans for, you know, a few hundred years. Um, Coloni, you know that, well, for one, in your spiritual form, you've gained some knowledge. Um, and I think that last session, we talked about that manifesting as names of a bunch of fae mm -hmm. um, and spirits. I keep saying fae like we're in D&D. &D. It's spirits. It's the spirit world. Um, the so the, the names of the spirits, uh, I don't believe I ever sent them to you, but uh, essentially you have the the ones that I named that are the archfey that are on the, the council right now. So you have Gaia, Ente, Aruna, uh, and you have River, <laughs> the, the river spirit dragon. Um, and then they're the greatest spirits that are inhabiting the halls right now, which are Hebai, Ng, uh, Siren, N Nasasi, and Ko. Um, so you all you know all their names. The rest of you don't really know their names. I don't think that, you know, the only one who introduced themselves was Ente, and he introduced himself to uh, Jet, uh, Jet the Ashen. Now, after that battle, having expended a tremendous amount of resources, a tremendous amount of energy to keep the army back, one of the vendors uh, from Hebas Forest rushes into the room uh, as each of the spirits rests in their throne. Uh, the battle, the battle's over for now, but it seems that the lava is keeping the undead at bay, but they're coming. They're rising back together. They're being put back together by that, that dark miasma cloud that permeates everything. I don't know how long we have. Uh, <clears throat> so all the spirits are in their, for lack of a better term, council throne chairs? Yeah, the greater spirits are not here. They're taking care of other things right. in the, uh, the rest of the, the bunny and tree uh, premises. Uh, but the archfey archer report. Yeah, so I know we we have to. I think Kalani's going to stand up, try and use her new size to assert some sort of authority and dominance, and be like, "We need to. We need to think of a plan. We have the avatar. We can. We can defeat whatever this terrible power is. But it's not." It's not going to be easy, but we have to work together. And and I don't know. We we need to use our our power with our powers combined. We can handle this. Um, yeah. And she's gonna run over to not run over. Probably very Jesus. slowly. Yeah, probably very slowly stomp <laughs> over to Jolo, or at least roll uh, over to him, or pick him up and put her in a put him in her lap. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you could sit there, pick up Jolo, pet Jolo. Uh, Jolo's like the size of a, essentially like a great Dane to you now. Um, he's probably smaller. He's probably like a. Size of a what? I'm trying to think. I mean, Coloni is like, if Coloni was a bear, then Jolo's the size of my dog, Zuko. Oh, okay. In okay, I see. In relation to right. yes, in relation. Uh, yeah. related. So Cloney is really big, <laughs> really big compared, and can totally pick up Jolo now. Um, and you guys are kind of small. The turns um, have tabled. So Cloney does this. The Swamp Ender like is looking at you, Cloney, and like nods and like, okay, I'll, I 
already everyone else. Um, the greater spirits are already taking command and um, just being generally prepared as we were before. Uh, but the an attack could be imminent. Um, but we will keep everyone appraised. But we just wanted to let you know that time could be short. And he bows deeply to you um, before rushing away. Do, am I going to make that, or is Colony capable of making that connection of it's definitely because of her s- spirit assertion? <laughs> four, four, four. <laughs> uh, I think that's up to you in this moment. I mean, you're also like you're using your size to take charge, and I think that maybe you like you can use that as something that you would. Yeah, she's trying. I just didn't expect it would go so well. So. Yeah. So maybe maybe you. I don't know. Maybe you take it as it is. Of like, oh, someone definitely listened to me. Um, but okay, cool. the. <laughs> that, so this happens, and I think that that sense of confidence um, maybe diminishes a bit because as this person leaves the room, their steps hitting stone, and it echoes out into this huge audience chamber. The echoes come back, and you all find yourselves under the gaze of these archfey, and the archfey are titans, right? They are enormous, way bigger than Coloni. Right, their heads, you know, essentially touching the ceiling in this place. Um, and to describe them once again, you have Gaia, who is a huge pile of moving rock, uh, stone, like different types of earth and stone. Um, and every time Gaia shifts, um, you can hear like, oh, the, like deep thunder, almost like when Konohana was rumbling and laughing and speaking. Um, but this is. I think it's more like sand than the 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 deeper like earthquake type rumble, um, and I think there's like pieces of dirt crumbling and then reabsorbing back into her. Um, there's a huge throne that's behind her is made of moss, um, just dense and kind of like damp looking. Um, and Gaia's settled back into this and looks, for all intents and purposes, like a small mountain but that it moves every once in a while. Um, you have Entei, the spirit of ash and flame, who is a humanoid skeleton, like a human skeleton, essentially bone white with huge oni horns um, that is on fire, f- fully wreathed in flame, sitting on their throne, uh, which looks like it was made from the bones of like a horse or something, like uh, several animals maybe with rib cages behind it. Um, the throne is not on fire, um, but it looks scorched. Like it's definitely being affected by the flames around him. Um, there is Aruna, uh, the spirit of gravity. Um, this is a huge, peat, like watery sphere that just floats above what looks like uh, not a chair or a throne, but maybe kind of like a birdbath, like a large pedestal that, with a basin uh, with this orb of water floating on top. Um, so definitely much less humanoid than the others. Um, and then you have River the Dragon, uh, who is coiled around their throne. Um, it seems to be kind of gold with like a red like satin cushion um very like stark contrast to the pure white scales horns um of this you know chinese like styled dragon you know those are very long uh like inf- infinite dragon kind of like um shenlong um essentially um and i think that everybody maybe wonders why <laughs> this throne is so different when all the other ones have perfect thrones for themselves. Um, but all of these huge creatures are looking on at all of you uh, in complete silence. And it is heavy. And it seems they're waiting for something. I get up and I walk to the, like kind of like in between them all to the center. Where's my mother? 
question that has long burned in your mind and that has driven you to come so far. Um, in this case, Gaia, mother of earth and plant and life, um, reaches out a hand moving towards you um, almost seems like a boulder is hurtling towards you, uh, but slows down and gently touches your head. And you feel the memory uh, of Helen, um, your mother dinosaur, um, flashes through your mind. I think what what's a memory that would come bit into your mind, thinking of your mother in the desert. Um, I think maybe our last hunt together. Ooh. That would probably come like the last hunt, all three of us. Uh, maybe we were chasing down. What's those, what's those creatures there? The the, do, do the animals exist on the other continent where I'm from, like the mixed animals? Uh, they're they're different, but uh, they're not necessarily like the animals that are here. Okay. Um, so, like, it would be so insectoid, maybe... but like insectoid spirits instead of you know mortal beings. Okay. So okay, so we were hunting down maybe like this like uh, this big old beetle thing, and maybe she gave me some pointers or something. Helped me to form my sand discs and gave me tactics like to that that served me later while riding J Joe. Yeah, I. So you start to you know form your discs as usual. They're wobbling a little bit, and Helen comes in and seems to move her hand in just an eye-catching way, and you copy and the edges of your sand disc get just a little bit sharper and you pick up on that and start to and all of a sudden they're sharp as can be uh you're smiling mm -hmm. laughing hunting together kill the shit out of that huge beetle uh all of you yeah. kind of feast on it uh it's gooey and gross and you you know mm. go to the oasis after oh. clean off uh, this will feed us for days <laughs> this will feed us for days, you say, uh, at the end of it. There isn't much left as you all lie there, full stomachs full, passed out in the sand as it cools for the night. Um, mm. And you get a memory in return. You receive a memory of the land. Um, this memory hurts because it's hard to for you as a human being to think like the earth itself um and so immediately you start getting a sense of in a word everything weighing down on you pressing yeah, yeah. it's all it you feel like it should hurt and you realize it doesn't and that that's just what it is and then as that recedes into like the core of your brain and you can perceive what's on top of that it all slopes inward uh, and the memory tries to form itself into a way that you can understand it. Um, so not everything that was happening in the world at that moment, but this particular place. Um, and you see, Helen, you see her being ridden by something dark, wisps yeah. of black coming off of it um you see that she has the like chains around her um and you see that every once in a while the darkness will kind of like alleviate in this wicked grin um underneath um and then it you recede from that but not into darkness or away over land and then over sea and then all the way here into your body um and you realize that this is a this is happening right now um this is like you shared gaia's perception for a second and she was able to 
just show you bring me that where that wasn't a memory it it is it is actively happening it, it's a memory so of what's she's happening still in the right. spirit club. she's she still in the spirit club across the ocean in the lost world but that's where we came from no i i think you don't quite know yet then that's what your suspicion is i think that this confirms oh. that 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 you're actually from a different place because the, okay. the place you just saw is not like your memories. That is not like your youth. Um, Fucking train, man. It's either the dog. <laughs> I, I think I'll go so far in this moment to say that you've heard of the other place, uh, and I don't think it crossed your mind that you were from there. Uh, you heard about the pocket spirit dimension that existed only in the lost world. Okay, that's the right, right, right. The world that exists within the world, uh, like kind of above it. Exactly. Okay, so she so, that's why she fell. That's why she fell. Uh so this is so the Zatasho Desert, I think you're starting to understand, is the pocket is the that sits on top yeah. of the lost, is, is the lost world. Yes. Now I do um, understand that. Incredible. So okay. That all starts happening in your mind. Joel is there, kind of like, what's going on? What's happening? And Gaia reaches the arm back. Um, never really sat forward in her in their chair. It's just their arm like elongated all the way to touch you, and then comes all the way back to them. We went too far, Joe. She's back. She's in. She's in the lost world. The what? The, that place where Quaddle came from? Like points over to Quaddle. Yeah, she's she's. They took her, man. They've got her chained up some bastards on her back which bastard like a common mule <sighs> we gotta get back there so joe Wrap looks around these... at the party like I, I don't know does anyone react to what rufu is saying he's like i think uh, looks a little bit desperate as he looks at all of you More determined than desperate. Jolo looks different, uh, desperate. Oh, okay. I think like I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily distance. be talking like loud. I would be talking like even voice, kind of like through gritted teeth, you know. Yeah, but I think everyone's kind of close enough to. I mean, the mm -hmm. uh, it's also the way this room works is that the even echoes. a whisper, even a whisper, is brought to the ears of all who are present. Um, I think you see Kayane, who was uh, who I said was there last time, kind of like tighten her grip um, on her like shamanic staff. Um, that she is tight-lipped, says nothing. Uh, Ketzel and Quaddle are there. Um, Everything Quattle okay? Kind of like unperturbed. <laughs> Go where? Listen, we'll wrap up these ponies outside, but then I gotta get back. I think you mean we got to get back. Yeah. Perhaps you mean we, uh, says Silas, who is also here. Uh, as per my... Did, did I say anyone else was here last time? I think Kayane and Silas were the other humans, oh, right? The orphan? Yeah. And Quetzal and Quaddle. Yeah, the orphan. Um, and Ananta with her bison. Oh, and Anata and Roa. They're more in the background, though. Like, Anata doesn't really want to step into the middle of this big council. She was kind of, she came for her bison and found well, out. Anata, what do you think? We've, <laughs> we've used your bison the whole time. I'll look at her. Weigh in, please. Yeah. Oh, Emma's not here because Emma was with uh, the drone. Um, <laughs> you say that, Anata's like, me? <laughs> You're <laughs> embarrassed. <laughs> uh, well. <clears throat> if Ananta is not saying anything and she's afraid, I think Colony is going to like, you know how dogs do that very slow crawl toward you? Like they want to play and they're just like slowly, very like on all fours, like stomach on the ground, like inching toward you. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure Colony would do almost similarly that, but as a bear and not because she wants to play, but because she's like, hey. Hey, we were we were buddies. We were buddies, and but like obviously not saying that. But she's like trying to 
warming on top because this is a very intimidating setting. Shit, mm -hmm. we're we all not all, but you know, three of us just went through major transformations. We're in the spirit council, so I think Colony would probably try and she's she's one of our longest traveling well, Colony's longest travel companion, so you you put that encouragement forth and uh she's able to i think with your encouragement let go of roa uh and walk forward as roa kind of like you know sleeps there a little bit one eye opens uh, as ananto walks away um and she smiles at you touches you as she passes coloni uh, and holds herself head held high uh and says as the daughter of the head monk of the southern temple Wow. We have always kept close ties with the spirits. Closer than some might realize. Uh, and she gives a little wink over to Tomei because you're from uh, the Western, Western Temple. Yes. Um, and you know exactly what ties she's talking about, which is tons of ancient histories uh, and the contracts. Mm -hmm. Um. We're a little bit more liberal with it over there in the West. Uh, <laughs> more for personal things. <laughs> she looks up at the, the spirits. She looks down to Rufu and says, I think that our best bet when it comes to defeating this force is to defeat it at the source. Whatever is empowering those dark versions of the Avatar, that other energy. Like any sickness, we must remove the cause. Not the sickness. I think that is right. Just point me in the direction. Yeah. Well said. Well said. <laughs> the back the archway completely quiet still that oppressive feeling hanging in the air still it is uh is jbrov like next to me jbrov is next to you i'll be like all right buddy it's time to end this stupid contract so i never have to see you again you excited oh, mama. i'm excited how are you uh, gonna do it i like grab him boost up to the front where Jolo was. <laughs> <laughs> Land. They'll be like, great spirits, I have a request of you, if you may. Or uh, in a recruit, if you will. This strapping young lad is laid his spirit life on the line time and time again. And I like push him to the front. He'd like to oh, seek oh. audience to join you. I just had a flashback to Dimension Knots in the underwater city when we brought somebody to see somebody. I don't know if you guys remember, but anyways, go ahead. <laughs> oh, yeah. No! Just he did it again! He did. Uh, no explosions this time uh, as Jake Rob is tossed onto the floor in front of them. It was, oh, uh, hey. So, uh, Can I get back on the council? Back on? Back on. Get back. Mm -hmm. And River the Dragon sighs and says, Your chair was vacated for a reason. But surely, Great River Spirit, he's redeemed himself. He, he brought us to you, and you fought so valiantly with us. I felt your power surge. It was... Amazing. I've never seen a spirit and a dragon. If he was being so valiant, then why did he not fight in the battle? He was there. I saw him. And, uh, it was because of our deal, of course. He was just to guide, not fight. Is this true? But I like nudge him. <laughs> I was like, 
it's it's true. <laughs> um, Been a little tricky. Dragon face low, moving side to side, eyeing him, eyeing you, Tomei, who are essentially vouching for him. I'm like bowing my head. I, I felt this immense power help me in the fight. I I, I respect it. it and, and it's a dragon. Oh, but... your mother was here. That's right. Yes, uh, that, that too. Looks to your mother, says. Hold on, I just need to find her name. <laughs> Kai uh, May. Kai May. May. You are going to owe us one for this. Shit. <laughs> I like look down. Uh, under my breath, forget. And <laughs> you feel your mother's grip on your shoulder. Um, every, to everyone else, it looks like she's comforting him. Uh, Tome, <laughs> she's heating your skin under that spot, <laughs> just like in like one like a pinch. Uh, it's a pin pick of flame. <laughs> uh, can I try and use fire bending to block it? Because she doesn't know I can fire bend. <laughs> uh, I'll rely on your roll me rely on your skills and training. Roll me with focus. With focus. <laughs> Can't but you'd have to make a movement to block her. You couldn't just, I don't think you could just absorb the fire. Like, that's just, not really how it works. Well, yeah, true, true. You have to like repel it. You don't uh, have to really, like, you could like try something. to breathe. Because of the like, nature of fire, but that's just my head can. Or more like withstand it, <laughs> With I guess. Probably. Yeah, I'll, I'll say you can try and breathe and, and like disperse the heat over an area instead of the pinprick. Um, yeah. Uh, that's eight. All right. With an eight. Uh, the feeling lessens a little bit, um, but your mother notices what you did. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. I won't pay attention uh, to it. And, and, uh, and I think another like another pinprick, another pinprick, another pinprick. I'll be like, uh, surely, a uh, great council. The the favor should be mine to repay. Uh, try to like steal myself. <laughs> mother says, "It will be done." <laughs> and she takes her hand off your shoulder. I look at my brother. <laughs> uh, he looks at you uh, and he gives you like a shit eating grin. Um, <laughs> like he knows this is your fault. I look away and down. I, um, thank you, mother. <sighs> Don't thank me yet. And J. Rob waddles over, um, and you see uh, <laughs> the great archfey uh, and Tay just put his face in his hand uh, as he goes, Whoa! and he spirals, sparks up uh, to the throne. The gold starts to shine and give off some light. Uh, the river dragon kind of moves, and all of you feel the chamber start to move um, mm -hmm. as another spot opens up for the river dragon. Um, this appears to be some sort of like a waterfall uh, falling into a pool on the floor. Um, and the kind of like as the wall opens and reveals this waterfall, uh, the dragon will go into the water, um, and you will just see the glow of its eyes staring up from behind the waterfall. Um, the shining throne, on the other hand, uh, sparkles. And what comes of this is essentially what would look like a prince uh, in flowing white and gold like garments uh, with like a cape, um, a crown made of stars, um, elvish ears that kind of like go way up. Um, but also two antenna uh, that kind of come out um, is Jabrov, uh, still with his pompadour under the crown, of course, and wearing sunglasses that look like stars. Um, but when he looks over them, you see that his eyes are all black. Um, Multifaceted? The eyes? Yeah. Yes. Sick. Uh, so he's like a bug spirit like a bug person a bug prince is really what it is oh um, he was inside my mouth 
<laughs> um, and he's like a bug mixture of Johnny Bravo and Bootsy Ooh. Collins. Been so long, been on this throne. I really missed it. Yeah. Now, big mama, and a little mama. I mean, it's over at Corona. I hate him so much. Oh, uh, uh, thank you, great council, for heeding me. Uh, and Johnny, uh, thank you for doing the minimal you could. And, uh, I like look up at my mom and be like, uh, may I be dismissed, uh, General? Uh, and uh, May looks at you, raises her eyebrows, and motions to your brother to take you out. That I kind of got motion to get my staff back. I feel like <laughs> from Anata. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, she doesn't have it on her. It's like by her bison. So if you want to like try and go grab it, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll go get it quick. Then go meet my brother. And not look at anybody. <laughs> uh, yeah, Luen Luen like looks at your mom like I can't control him. Like he's gonna be like this, <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and follows you as you get your staff. Uh, and it follows you out. Just like all DMs that play with Shadim. <laughs> I can't control him. I can't control him. going to be like this. Damn. Um, uh, and May, May stands firm with the rest of you in this chamber. Uh, Johnny Bravo is sitting on his throne like this, by the way. Uh, of course. Um, and as he sits there, and the kind the of like time twinkle. Bo-Katan. Bo-Katan. It's a... Oh, Bo-Katan styles. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, remind me of that later when we're not streaming. I have something I really wanted to say about that. But it's a whole conversation about Star Wars. That you were part of the 2%? No. We all are. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, j Brav is here on the throne. And Tay looks up just says motion to dismiss and he points at j brav um ed gaia's here here uh and he's like wait what <laughs> the river dragon here uh, and everyone kind of turns to look at the water, uh, and a single drop of water plunk, uh, hits the fountain beneath it. Um, he goes, no! <laughs> uh, and the tree starts to... <laughs> and shuts out his throat. You hear it a muffled, like... <laughs> as J. Rob is brought out of the council room. Um, and space is made for the dragon's throne. Damn. Um, Ruthless. Damn. He's nothing but a destruction. That's fair. Short term. Time is short. Fair. Humans, your aid helped us at this battle, and we owe you a great debt. One of you has already received the highest honor that we can bestow to become one of us, to live. Another one of you motions to Colony. They have new responsibilities as a result. And the rest of you, what is it you are here for? Uh, you look to Zoo and look to Rufu. Uh, just we were told to bring. I mean, I'm here. Jolo here. We did. Yeah, we're here to keep him safe. And what will we're we here do? Here to train the Avatar and find my mom. What do you mean? We have no such obligations. And none of us can leave. The siege continues. 
And he actually turns to look at May, uh, and she looks at the rest of you and says, I'm here because the Soul Nation is under attack, and I've come for succor from the, the Archfey. The dragons have been enough to protect our lands until now, but they are not of infinite strength, but neither are we. There is a another one of these dark generals plaguing the lands there. They have some control over gravity itself, uh, and the water orb ripples the archfey uh, as she says this. Um, They can use some sort of an air bending we've never seen before. <sighs> you were talking about getting rid of the source of this power. You're talking about the the gas miasma. My intelligence tells me that that is another one of the generals and perhaps not the final source that Ananta spoke of which could be at the other continent currently that is probably the case I might have an idea on how to deal with the gas I would just need to rest How much time do you need to rest? Um, mechanically, how many, how much time would I need to reset my balance? <laughs> uh, you need, you need like an eight-hour rest. Do <laughs> you need to sleep? Because molten metal can trap gas. Molten metal? What do you mean by that? Well, heat up metal enough and form it around the gas. It'll trap it and keep it contained. So you're saying that we could limit that thing's, that person's power by essentially trapping them and not allowing them to use it to invade those bodies? I think so. Look, I've never dealt with a gaseous evil miasma. I'm just talking pure science here. Uh, it works with natural gases. I don't know if it'll work with this. I see. But this is still not the heart of the problem. There's still whatever was shown to your friend by Diane. Yes, You've but I'm aware that there's this other world, there's this other continent. That's a problem that we would need to move there to handle. Right now this is pressing and we need to at least deal with this seemingly infinite army as they keep on getting reanimated by this gas silas says here here and when it comes to going somewhere quickly then i think that i would be able to get you where you're going rather quickly yes i have a shortcut, if you will. Something that they will not be expecting. But I can tell you when you are ready, when you are past this first obstacle. Uh, no, just, just an idea, you know. Uh, might help. Uh, the dragon speaks once again. If you were to destroy the last or help us 
defeat this last of the generals here, we could send aid over to the Soul Nation. Just weaken their grip on the world, really. Then may you would owe us two favors. Uh, and you see her wince at that. Um, I think kind of pridefully. Wait. But if we're helping you, wouldn't that cancel out? Do you speak for the Soul Nation? I speak for an individual helping another. Right now the world's in crisis, yours and ours. Why speak of owing when we're all just trying to live? The Archfey are quiet at this. Uh, and I think roll with harmony in this moment. Um, and Jolo is going to give you, as the avatar, uh, a bit of an edge. Um, he's going to come up and stand with you um, to remind them of the bond that spirits and people share. Um, so I rolled a 9 plus 1, so 10. That's a 10. Nice. That's a 10. Mm. Uh, beautiful. So on a 10, they look at each other and for the first time, Aruna speaks. And you hear what sounds like rushing wind, but maybe it's water. Uh, and this voice, what about the balls? The north and the south. These are entrances to the spirit world and the armies. They're attacking those places. The south is gone. We hold what it's been back from the north. This council. Could you clear the south as well? Who's, who, who are they speaking to? They're speaking to all of you here. I mean, you're the one talking. Um, Jolo... It nods, um, but I think that you, you get the impression that they're not super fond of the Avatar. And they're asking, can we clear the South? Can you clear the South? Can you take care of it? J just us? Look around like the, the six individuals around these giant Took out an what do you need to do? Would you playing your master all the elements? Would be a chance for this avatar to prove themselves useful, worthy, able. If the avatar does this, we will recognize that they deserve a seat on this council, a voice always to be heard through all of their reincarnations. Uh, the other Archfey kind of look up at that. Uh, but stay quiet on your 10 plus. Uh, I'm kind of like turn to this. I don't really know what that means. Like that's, that's a big deal, right? Uh, uh, you hear that's... Jello's voice for the first time and he goes, yeah, that's a big deal. Um, Sue, you hear him as well. Um, Jet, you hear him as well. Oh, he's still a dinosaur, right? He's still a dinosaur, but he has walked up into the middle of the room, uh, and there is a sort of connection Joe. in this place that okay. it, it, oh, the normal. bond that was forming between all of you all like solidifies a little bit. Um, uh, I'll step forward for sure. Do yeah. you want? that i mean we'll help you if you want to get that seat but right now what do you think's more important going to try and find your mom after this or clearing the south um, or is clearing the south just a way to get there because we can get into the spirit i'm just looking there? at 
straight, straight face. I think that you're all kind of my family now. You're like, I don't know. Even if I don't ever get mom back, I don't think I could take on the fight without you guys. Joe. The heck? No. He grabs Rufu in, but he also I grabs turn away. the rest of you. You turn away? Where are you going, uh, he doesn't let you go. <laughs> He's going to smush turn you. Away here and then. Kind of like, like walk a couple steps. <gasps> well, he grabs everybody and he looks at you, uh, Rufu, and he is going to give you kind of like a like puppy eyes and just be like you don't like them it's not that i just i, I think have to he find her just yeah. wants to see her mom again to, to help her he nods we'll do it but we're stronger together we can do both I think it's just the the order that can do both at the same decide. time. I look to the river spirit and I say, "There's got to be some way." Guys, you I don't can know if you know, we're also like fast. talking about this in the middle of the room with like a lot of important spirits. I don't know if this is the right spot to do it. Uh, what do we answer? Well, Rufu just asked the river spirit a question. Uh, you said, how can you, how can you get, there must be a faster way to get there is what you said. Yeah, there must be a way that you, you guys with all your power can get me to the other world. Just to me. He kind of like nods his head. I could. You see he ponders a while, weighing some options. Um, and so, Shen, you said maybe we shouldn't be talking about this I'll here. Turn back. Okay. Yeah, Jolo looks crestfallen that you would even suggest going alone. I just look at him. Like, I'll turn back and look at him. I say, you have to help these people. You have... Responsibility of the world, Joe. But I, I need to do this. And the I can hardly look at him. Can, if you look I, away. Oh, go ahead. Can I plead with Rufu? I know it says plead with an NPC, but it's a harmony roll. Maybe call him out. Um, Ooh, I think you should out. call him out would work. Oh, uh, when you open the policy, want to live up to the principle. What are your What are your two balances? Loyalty and confidence. <gasps> oh, 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 you can call on his loyalty. <laughs> Treason, then. <laughs> we all call him out. Rufu just fucking destroyed him. <laughs> all right. I'll let you guys resolve that. Uh, but the the river dragon starts speaking with the other arch fae. Um, uh, the other arch spirits. Fuck, I keep saying arch fae. <laughs> what, what do I roll with that, though? It doesn't tell me. The high spirits. Uh, uh, yo, you don't roll. He rolls. I am. So you call. The, so fine. I will take over this. Uh, you call him out to live up to his principle, um, and so Rufu has to roll with um, loyalty. So whatever your bonus is to loyalty currently, based on your balance track, which I believe is bad right now. Um, 
And on a hit, he has to. Um, act I think it's a plus one. one. I've got a plus, plus one for loyalty. I, I don't know. I got a plus two to loyalty. Plus two. Whoa! I thought you were way more towards confidence right now. It's Colony that rolls. Isn't no, it? I'm I'm towards loyalty. I, th I thought. Yeah, Colony rolls with his principle. Oh, Colony rolls with his principle. Mm -hmm. Then name and roll oh, with their principle. You have principle. to shift your balance away from center. Yeah. And then roll with their principle. Huh. Yeah, so whatever his loyalty is, if that's what you're calling on, you roll with that. Oh, so Colony rolls, but and you add a plus two to the roll, and you want it to hit. So I roll a base, my, I just roll base and add oh. two. 11 plus two. And loyalty Ooh. towards who? Uh, loyalty so towards... <laughs> Towards your brother. He's your baby brother, is he not? The one that you've done everything to fight to and protect. Bring back his mom. And he has all you the You literally food. turned your back on him. <coughs> Go for um, that guilt trip. Yeah. So on a hit, they are called to act as you say. You must either do it or mark a condition. Um on a seven to nine, they challenge your view of the world in turn, mark up fatigue, or they shift your balance as they choose. Um, but you got an absolute success, so that doesn't come into play. But Rufu can, can mark a condition instead. So can I have to take a condition? a condition? Well, it says they must either do it or mark a condition. I'm already at, right now, I'm at four fatigue and three conditions. <laughs> and you know what? I'm are, taking are another condition. I'm angry now. <laughs> I thought it was five. Oh, hold on, hold on. Fitting. Mess with the hole. You get the hole. Five conditions? Okay. Five conditions, four fatigue. Jeez. Now you pissed me off. Hurting the edge. Kids are just knocking out. How dare you? Four conditions, four How dare three. you question my loyalty? <laughs> <laughs> No, you know what? Fuck it. Hmm? Is that what you say? What do you say? What do you say in response to Colony calling? You're right. That's it. I say that at first, and then I say, fuck it. You're right. <laughs> I can't run from this either. We'll do it. We'll do it when the time is right, and we'll do it together. I just like whisper. And then I turn away with a smile on my face. And I'm still gonna take the condition. And I'll look at the at the avatar, the not the avatar, but the spirit of uh of water. And I'll like wink and nod. A weird uh, like... <laughs> Only you hear the words come see me later. Uh, everyone else who is in the chamber, is there anything else that you want to say? I, I, because I want to, I do want to switch back to Lu Wen and Tome uh, soon as they walk away from the council chamber. Um, but the Archfey kind of look at each other. Um, there's been some deliberation on potentially fighting a battle here, fighting a battle in the South Pole, sending, you know, power uh, out uh, towards the west. Um, and so they're still speaking in, you know, this ancient language uh, of the spirits. Colonna, you're catching like every fifth word kind of thing. Okay. I, I, I think they dismissed us. Oh. I don't know. They're just talking amongst themselves right now. Uh, thank you. Thank you. What what I catching in every fifth word? What what am I hearing? Uh, you you hear like forces, and then you hear something about a time of day. You hear something about journey. You hear something about dragons. Um. You hear something about portals. Okay, so it's just kind of reiterating what they just said. They they seem like they're just debating. Um. 
Yeah. Kaine will, I think, come forward now and say, perhaps we can leave and discuss amongst ourselves, the humans. Uh, looks a little questioningly at Kaloni. Um, and Jet. On next steps, yes? About uh, this molten metal defeat of the general? <laughs> Attempted. I don't really know. It should work. <laughs> Hand to your back. Work. Well, it is your time to excel and show that the Neoterics uh, know what to do and that they can solve this crisis with their science. He's been like using like a long stick to scratch into the ground, different equations, and just like like scratching things out and trying to like see like. I well, she's ushering more. you out of the room. <laughs> so if you like oh. start to like try and poke at something, she's like, "Take my you know stick what? in another room." <laughs> now I'm following. I don't care. Uh, yeah, you follow. Um, so I'll begin to exit. Uh, Coloni, your battle form can recede. Um, and you shrink down a little bit. In the same way, um, if you watch the original series and you see Heibai, uh, Heibai has like the four-armed battle form um, and then fades into a panda bear. Um, oh, yeah. happy. Um, so your earth sign form, you describe those markings and the claw, like the bristling fur. Um, when you go back into more of a, a normal spirit form, what would you look like? Um... Honestly, I feel like it would just resemble Heibai's form in a more feminine way. Like maybe it's slightly smaller, slightly less. It'd be like Bobo's playfulness with Heibai's pattern, I guess, where Bobo was a very like fluid looking panda, not like really panda looking. And then um, probably even less pattern. Uh, or at least less distinct. So it'd be like a, instead of it being like black and white, it'd probably be like a gray and white uh, panda pattern, but like definitely mm. just more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So instead of a black and white panda, it's a gray and white panda. Um, absolutely. Um, and you take on that more feminine panda form, um, and you still tower like probably like eight feet over everybody else. Um, that's a little bit more manageable now as you guys walk away. It's huge. 13 feet tall. Um, but as you guys all make your way towards maybe another place to hammer out uh, some legit plans and perhaps take a rest, um, we're going to pan over to Luen and Tome as you guys walk away. Um, so Luen's walking with you. Uh, and you see that he's observing you. I'm just kind of like tapping my staff, not like really leaning on it, but kind of using it to walk, just like thinking and murmuring to myself. And you're like, oh, this is you hear the, the elder in your head, more Kai's, and it just seems very excited. <laughs> so I'm like, I didn't want to talk to him in the room just because like it projected everything. So I think I'd be like waiting to get just outside the room and then kind of listen into the conversation everybody is having in the room so i don't miss out on anything but being away from like the gaze all uh, right so if you stop luen uh is going to look at you and just go so what are you doing here hmm? <sighs> i forget if i said he was my big bro or my little bro um... <laughs> uh he's 26 and you're 23. okay so... this is my big bro yeah i just be like shut up luen <laughs> like lean up crouching against the wall uh, his eyebrows raised. He goes, "You, oh, our nation, a huge favor." I know, I know. I'll be doing duty for years again. Just when I thought I could leave, <sighs> I don't think that's what's going to happen. What do you mean? This is rich coming from you. You never done anything, Luen. You go that's... traveling with dad and then come back whenever you want. That's what you think. Why do you think I'm here, brother? <laughs> he kind of circles you. Why do you think that your good for nothing brother would be at the spirit council with the general of the army? And 
coming out. And like my burn, my like right shoulder kind of like aches. I'm like, ah, bastard. You're trying to up show me again, aren't you? It's never been a contest. Oh, you've done nothing. What, telling me you're going to lead now? I've already been leading. You just didn't know it. What? What have you done? Hmm. Do you remember the smoke? Yes. Who do you think leads them? He leans close and whispers it in your ear. What? Who better than the son of one of the hands of the dragon? I, I don't quite follow the wind. I, wait. Let's just say that Mother's not the only one with a direct line to the dragon lord. And your case, as awkward as this is, has now fallen to me to make decisions for how to approach this avatar situation. There's, he's, he's, I've seen him in action. He's spectacular. Maybe, maybe the, maybe the dragons need help with him. Maybe we need to do something different for once. Well, whatever it is, we want you to stick with them. It seems that you have their ear, you have their trust. And so, rather than have you go your own way, we propose that you pay your debt for appointing that odd archfey, although he already seems gone, to the council. But uh, that was part of your your plan too. You were expecting that. Maybe not expecting, but I think in this moment it is going to be up to me to deal with the consequences. And I don't think I can ingratiate myself with the found family of the Avatar, or at least enough to get everyone to trust me implicitly, especially in a combat situation. Realistically. But you have some shared history now. You've been through something, it seems. Everyone has come back tired and hurt after these battles. And something seems different about you. Although I can't quite place my finger on it. Maybe in our rematch you'll find out, brother. The elder in your head laughing. And I like say in my head, Elder, I want to knock him down a peg. I want to so bad. Right now, do it. And I, I stand up. Uh, rematch now. Uh, no, wait. But shit. See, Sunrise. Archer's <laughs> eyebrow. We don't have time to fight amongst ourselves. You would get further wounded before helping the Avatar. Would you really bring shame upon the entire soul nation? No, I'm not going to fight you. Uh, all right, so this isn't over. I'll, I'll, I, I, I made this mess, and I must do my, I must bear my responsibilities. I get ahead of yourself. You only took the blame. Uh, and he's going to walk away. Uh, whistle a little bit and kind of talk back to you a little quietly and just say, we'll be watching. Uh, <laughs> and kind of walk out of there. Uh, damn it. I just slink back and sit by the entrance and kind of wait for everyone to come out. Uh, yeah, so you don't you don't miss anything. You see the kind of like group hug uh, as you fume on the side. Uh, the elder just in your head, like that would have been a perfect moment, all of them at once. 
I need not power right now, Elder. I need I need to think. He controls that smoke. How? Why? We need we we need to learn more, Elder. Ask your father. I've been looking at your memories. He's he's he hasn't been much, you know. I I, I could bring him. Wait, I I can I have been wanting to talk to him about you know stress rock. So you know, two birds with one stone. If your mother's important, and if your brother's important, then isn't would it be interesting if your father was important too? <laughs> One of his wild ventures coming through for once. <sighs> All right, it seems the path is set. To the group we go. <sighs> I'll get up, slick my head, and join the group. Um, yeah, so you join them as everybody's exiting. Um, <laughs> and so you all exit the chamber. I haven't spoken with the Archfey. Uh, Jet and Sue, very little, if at all. <laughs> Um, how are you two feeling as you follow everyone out of the chamber? Um, Kai's mother here, Tired. Ananta's here, Tired. <laughs> um, Tired and wounded. So, feeling kind of, kind of, conflict. Yeah. Feeling conflict. Kaine will come back to you, pat you both on the shoulder. Um, I think you all see her now. Like when you first started, she was like a mysterious, sang on mystic, and now like you look at her and like she's just an old woman. She's an old waterbender, um, who has been speaking. She's, the, she's humanity's seat on the council, um, and so she's just been, you know, humanity's voice with these spirits. Kaine, uh, I feel like I need some guidance. Oh. They said I was blessed with, like, the greatest blessing they could bestow upon me, and I just don't know how to make use of it. I, I, I don't want to make the wrong choice. I don't, I don't want to be sent to the wrong place where... I can't help as much as I should. I don't even really know what this means. Hmm. Well, it seems you're no longer quite human. Which happens yeah. when you deal with spirit. Would I be better off somewhere else, not in this realm. My personal opinion is that I think the Avatar needs help. And I think that the Avatar's powers will be necessary to combat this presence. This evil spirit. That was what my vision said a month ago, and here you all are, changed. And I'm sorry that I had a hand in that at all. But without you, this place would have fallen. And she looks at you, Sue. Your siblings, your orphanage children, they would be gone, for they are here. Well, thanks to our boy. Yeah. Thanks, so Jet. Well. Oh. No, what? <laughs> I, you it's sacrificed your entire body. It's kind of insane. Honestly, yeah, I haven't um, wrapped my head around it. Could have been much worse. Could have uh, potentially yeah. all died in that explosion if it weren't for the, the great spirits there. Sorry about that. Wait, what? I, I asked I Konohana played. not to, to kill you, but I, I guess I didn't realize she couldn't really control how powerful. So, oh, I think she she did uh, hold back a little bit for you. 
Being that close to a volcano was no small feat for anyone, even a, a bender of the highest caliber, Earth or Fire. But, does that mean like you and Konohana are like merged? Like, are you the same being now? Or what, how what? we were for a while, but I I don't think I feel her anymore in that way. So she's just like out there. <laughs> point in the general direction of that volcano. That's. <laughs> I feel. I felt like, like she returned to the Earth, like out of my orb and into the, the orb of the world, the orb of the Earth. You the cool. released a natural disaster. <laughs> I'm not really sure. I just I don't really feel her here anymore. So how did you become? This. this. <laughs> Sorry, I, don't, I really don't know how to like pass my hand through you. Yeah, I'll through. let it go through this. Time. <laughs> <laughs> I tried put it back. <laughs> Fascinating. <laughs> I, I don't know. How does that work? I, I, I don't know. I, I didn't ask. I just asked her to save you guys. I let her take over. I didn't think I had time to find out exactly what. Yeah, kind of is like looking at you. No, it seems your physical form has been mixed with the spiritual form. And this spiritual form is ash. And so you exist in all the particles. Um, and you see she like reaches into your ash a little bit um, and oh, pinches wow. it. Oh, and she's getting, pinching my ass. She pinches her oh. ass. Uh, as old women do to like kind of like you feel it almost like pinching your cheek, right? So she like grabs the ash and as she rubs it between her fingers, it's like then you feel it. Um but she's actually putting pressure on like the soot itself. Some sort of strange possession. Truly fascinating. Am I possessed? I don't think I am. Oh no. No. Can you still eat? We've heard of this. I don't think so. This is, uh, uh, hold on, I look through my notes. Uh, uh, this is like the, Keep the, doing it. <laughs> the mortal bound. This is more than spiritual aspects, but less than the full spirit. You're a spirit that is tied to something real. Am I tied to ash? It seems this particular cloud of ash that maybe uh, you see she stops what she's saying but realizes she can't stop because she's mid-sentence and already telling you the answer. That maybe was your body before and still is now. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. No, it's uh it's okay. I never really cared for worldly possessions anyway, so. Well, if you focus, can you can you pop his hand? You can feel when someone pats you on the back. Uh can I go and like reach for the zoo? Yep. What are you doing? Try and like grasp my hand around yours if you'll put it up. Oh, 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 this feels weird. You're so <sighs> dusty. <laughs> um, yeah, and so he his hand I feels a little gritty, a little dirty, uh, but it's solid and and warm and like it, it, it feels like a, a hand. Huh. And yeah, I'll just it's still you. I guess you really are Jet the Ashen now. Well, I'll try and like disperse myself a little bit. Come uh, yeah, you get wispy. You kind of can look like a little cloud if you want to. Uh, you can't completely disappear. Do I um, sneeze? So in terms of like what new powers this gives you, uh, you can essentially D and D styles pass through like a, like Ooh. a one inch kind of gap kind of thing. Nice. Um, you can become like a, a mist cloud essentially. You can still be hit uh, even when in your gaseous form, but you're harder to see. Um, yeah. So you're a little bit more stealthy when you're like that. Um, nice. And additionally, 
in the same way that Colony has gained a little bit of resistance um, to fatigue, a little bit more power, um, you also gain an additional two fatigue um, permanently. Me. So, Colony has ten. Now I have ten total. Yeah. That's good. You have ten, and now you have twelve. No. He was just saying, I have 10 total. He was saying that you, similarly to what Colony has, you also have oh, okay. additional. Okay. No. Um, nice. So the people turned into spirits have gained additional health. Um, nice. Well, my mind's made up then. I, I'm sticking with YOLO. I think most of us are. Or actually, oh, all, all of us are. Yeah. Rufu, oh, you had me there for a second. But I'm glad you're <laughs> with us. I just wish I was an earthbender. I'd feel a lot more comfortable. <laughs> Why? You know, all earthbenders, except for you, of course. You're beautiful water bending, but you know, it's quite impressive when they all work together. So, you know. I. May need the help of your air bending, honestly, later yeah. to kind of filter in, kind of like vacuum up the the gas. And your fire never hurt either. <laughs> well, I'm officially at your service, not just as Kai told me, but as a scale of the soul, the people, the soul protectors. I'll work as hard as you need. And I like bow down to Jolo. Back. Oh, I think he's myself back to Jolo himself, actually, not us. Well, all of you, of course. You guys have proven yourselves valiant and have saved me. So, definitely have earned my respect time and time again. Thank you, Tommy. Thanks, man. All right. Oh, Tommy. Oh, yes. I said uh, when we brought Rufu and Jolo here that I would give you this back. Right. And for the dagger. Oh. Oh. Uh, I'll like hold it out. And I guess Mother would see it too. Uh, your mom, <laughs> I think she walks up, <laughs> grabs the dagger, <laughs> looks at Sue, <laughs> and you get a withering look. Uh, from a lady with jet black hair, um, short cropped just to pass her cheeks, um, with what looks to be elaborate armor, um, with like inlaid gold, uh, and you know, like two like huge kind of rubies in it. Like it looks not only functional but beautiful <laughs> as well. Like there I have is no life. idea how she fights in it. It's beautiful, um, <laughs> and you you can see the similarity okay, all if you soul. remember the dagger had a jewel encrusted hilt um, with that like Damascus steel blade and it looks so at home in her mm -hmm. hand um, and you you can see that she has like an, essentially an even more ornate dagger at her belt um, she looks at you Tome and says a promotion is long past due unfortunately <sighs> this is only for one of the scales talents. or one of the talents. Yeah. I know I was due for promotion and I left, but I, I that surely with this new job it, it, it means something. I I know I'm doing a favor to, to redeem what I've done, but I, I, it's a great favor and a duty that not just anyone could perform. She unsheaths the dagger um and holds the blade out to you oh, and you know that she's looking for you to um uh, prick your finger on it yeah i, I do it uh and so you prick I, your I put finger. my face luffy style oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's not here he left <laughs> so are we you... doing this while we're walking <laughs> yeah she does does this they do this while they're while you're walking she'll like quickly smear it in the blood on your hand, sheath the dagger, um, and whispers something that uh, nobody can hear. Um, 
and hands it back to you and says, "You are now officially a Talon." Oh, uh, I don't. I don't feel any different. Hey, congratulations! Yeah, you have a, your well, own I, transformation too. I guess, and I like shamefully kind of look away, like. No. Uh, but she looks at Sue and says, and and appears, old, <laughs> "One of." The other talons kid. saw potential in you, in your strength. Uh, I guess. What? Would oh, you protect you... all those weaker than you? Would you make sure that yeah. no harm came to those unable to protect themselves? That's my ammo. Roll a harmony for me, please. Harmony. Ah. Oh. I gotta give it back to him now. <laughs> seven. Uh, on a sudden, she looks at you. Um, and you see, there's something in her eye. Um, a little bit of mischief that you maybe recognize from uh, the other family member that is no longer present. Mm. <laughs> uh, and I think that she says, "Well, there is a place for you within the Soul Protectors, should you wish." Ma'am, I just want to get back home and. Well, after we deal with all this stuff, obviously. I don't, uh, I don't even like soul protectors. I'll be like, Zoo, <laughs> I'll be you might you'll try that muffin recipe. They jailed me. <laughs> but the muffins. But well, I'm muffins. sure that you could those, be... Those sound delicious. ...you want to see, young man. We got it. You out. could be the soul protector, and you could... Be the one telling you. <laughs> I, I, I just like I look at her. I go, wait one second. It wasn't muffins, Tomei. Okay, it was dumplings. All right. <laughs> oh right. And I got that. I got that recipe. Long. <laughs> uh, yeah. At a loss, the <laughs> one of the hands of the dragon just looks at Shed and goes, "See, always like this." <laughs> Very food motivated, mother. <laughs> like uh, like our the... attack hounds. <laughs> we're we're still kind of finding out our own priorities, right? Like. We don't know. What we... so, yeah. Just imagine oh. instead of being the one only eating the soup, you could be in the kitchen making it and making sure that it's good. And then you could eat it. Hey, soup's always good. What are you talking about? I tried, guys. I tried. <laughs> it's just. Oh, it's so it's so like more work. She, she, she shrugs. Work <laughs> she essentially says, Well, you could always just be one of the dragon chefs if you want. <laughs> Sounds kind of interesting. Ah, got him. Uh, turns walks away. Give <laughs> <laughs> you just hold your soul. Uh, I'll, I'll <laughs> walk up to him and give him back the knife. And be like, I can't take this from you. This promotion feels cheap. You, you've earned this. And kind of well, hand it back out. Um, okay. Well, I guess when we save the the portal or whatever, I'll I'll, I'll give it to you then. Deal. All right. I don't uh, you see a kunai hits uh, the wall in between you two into like a root um, with a message fluttering off the end. Uh, and it says, To Tome, take the dagger back uh, with love, Luen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking ignoring that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I burn it. You burn the like, note. <laughs> Wait, what does it Oh, uh, nothing, oh, nothing. Oh, okay, okay. Sweet. Are, are people trying to kill us in the spirit council too? Oh, my Why? brother. It's just my brother. He, uh, he, he always does this. He always shoots kunais at me. <laughs> uh, amazing. Uh, you guys make your way to another more relaxing chamber. Um, this is where Heibai is resting in his puddle of tea. Um, and there's kind of accommodations that have been set up here, oh. and it's less of like a emergency room as now it's more of like a resting area um there's enough place for even ananta and roa to come in um and as you all gather in here i'd like to know what all of you want to be doing uh coloni hey seems to be sleeping um and by hey i mean your human body um and as you kind of look over you see your human body of coloni um black panda markings kind of like on your skin um as you lay in a pool of tea and i think that it's probably kind of surreal experience to just see yourself floating there. 
Yeah, especially because she ran out earlier. But I think entering that room, she's going to not rush or run, but just not stop walking until she reaches him and maybe even like lay by her physical body. Um, just like, that. oh, my dog, I'm so sorry if you hear her. Yeah, it's okay. Um, I'm the avatar. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I can't yell at her. Um, so I think uh, Colony would just like walk over um, and maybe nudge or at least examine her own <laughs> lifeless body, but then focus on her father. And uh, that is your father. Um, I mean, the dad's in my body. Dad's yeah. in your body. Uh, and I think as you nudge the lifeless, the lifeless body, uh, the eyes slowly flicker open. Um, in a smile that you recognize as your dad's, as this like kind and you know, I think for lack of a better word, infinite, right? It's so old and wise. Um, and it's almost like you see these wrinkles on your face that were never there to, to, to like accentuate that. Um, yeah, like 7,000 years older. What the fuck? They're, they're like they're spirit wrinkles. Uh, <laughs> um, and he you feel that that deep connection that understanding um i i, I want to ask you this do you think hey by speaks or does hey by just like give like off emotions oh, i think he i think he well he spoke in the spirit realm but he didn't speak in the mortal realm uh but this is the spirit council where spirits are i think it would be similar a similar case to where jolo is and then where like he, it's based on connection as to his communication preferences. Mm -hmm. I would think that he's capable of speaking to Colony, but I don't think he would bother, for lack of a better term, to talk well, to think, others. Yeah, but I think for the first time he's using vocal cords in a human body, uh, and so he kind of croaks out, "My daughter." Um, and. It, yeah, I think. What do you do in this? I moment? think, oh yeah, just like nudging him with her, her nose, like her in her casual panda form. Um, definitely, just like happy that he's okay. Trying to get him to like, you know, she's just trying to. It's disbelief, like just straight up silence, and just like he's alive, he's alive, and just kind of like curl around him. Um. Um kind of like reaches one hand and touches your your snout and kind of like pats it um you are my heir to the forest and my power my domain do not blame your mother she's not at fault If you, if you do not wish this, you may return to being human. But then I will disappear. No, no, I, I did everything I could to save you. I can't, I need you, the world needs you, even if you're... She just looks me. No, I just teach me what you what I need to do, and I even brought the avatar. Look, and she'll like snap her head over to Jolo. I don't know what he's doing, but she'll like look. But no, I think I'm he's so weak he can't even look. Um, but that smile is still there. I knew you'd be able to do so. All of your willful and intelligent and skillfulness everything must come to an end no, she's I would think at this point she's getting anxious like stamping her feet like, there's no end there's no end you're fine you're, you're right here. 
And you can tell me what I have to do. I have to really say it. This council said I have responsibilities now, and you can teach me those, and I can do them. All we have to do is just for you the southern the southern spirit portal, and it'll be fine. We can be together, and if mom is okay, and hopefully she's okay, we'll be a family again, and it'll be we'll just continue what we've been doing for as long as we can. He takes in a deep, labored breath. You must choose. I can't keep this body alive much longer. It's up to you. Okay, hold on. Time out. He said, I stay panda and he dies. Or, or I don't, I go back to mortal and he dies. Correct? Uh, yes, you can either go back to being a human, mm. uh, in which case he will disappear. Um, or you can stay the spirit of the forest, uh, in which case your body will disappear. So either way, he disappears. Dad, no! But in one of them, his legacy, well, in both of them, his legacy lives on in a, di a different way. So, uh, I mean, okay. So I thought there was a, he lives on in Colony's body. That'd be really weird, but she, she's, got it. okay. Um, I think at that point she'll not maul him, but just like jump onto him and uh, <laughs> <laughs> I kill my dad. Um, <laughs> but she like I, I'm, the spirits of you, and I'm gonna do my best to to make you proud. But you gotta hang on. Let, tell me how I can help you. Hang on. What do I have to do? And she'll start trying to like I don't know use her spirit power bend. The things that she has at her at her finger paw tips, um, she'll just, I, you know, I, I can't. I don't know what I could do without you. I don't know what what to do without you. And, and I don't know. At that point, she's just going to probably get not hysterical, but just keep repeating herself. Yeah, uh, he seems to fall into a bit of a slumber at that point. Um as you cradle him. Um, but he seems stable for now. It seems like you have some time to make your decision. Um, as everybody else here gets uh, comfortable in their, their spot that they pick um, in the room. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Connie's just going to chill with him. If it's okay, I'll probably chill with Colony. If I can, like, get a sense that she's kind of in this state. And just, like, in my ash form. Like, not be a presence that she feels she needs to acknowledge, but just be there. <laughs> um, I don't think there's any, there would be no issue with that. She'd probably... I very much appreciate it. Perhaps to guide. I think <laughs> Anasha <I'm not, I'm laughs> come into Roa, like kind of behind you guys, um, provides like a bit of a couch for you all to be close to uh, uh, to Heibai in these moments. I think I'm gonna try to take some time aside to uh, ask Mother to show her. Like that, I could fire Ben now, like quietly somewhere, and try and like learn proper uh, form now, or at least a move or something, or like explain some of the stuff that happened uh, only to her, try to away from everybody in the way, if I could at some point in the day. Uh, yeah, she'll take you to a training room, uh, and you guys can maybe, as you relate what happened since you left, um. As you, you know, practice some fire bending forms together, um, there's just something you weren't able to do before. Yeah, fairly. Yeah, and like be honest with her about like the elder and stuff, and like just try to. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no. If you're gonna do that, we're gonna run a scene. <laughs> <laughs> I could do it later if that's fine. Well, does, does anyone else want to do something, or are you? Is everybody going to bed right now? It's late. You're tired. 
food? Yeah. Uh, do you rough. just tell someone for food, or do you go looking for food? I go looking for food. <laughs> I, I go looking for food. Would like to. Let's go see River. You sneak back out to see the dragon. Yes, sir. Great. Jolo kind of falls asleep with you. Yes, sir. Um, Sorry, the, the the delay is horrible tonight. <laughs> Ooh, okay. It's the cheese. Um, <laughs> like a full 10 second. Back. Okay. A <laughs> full 10 second. That must be a goddamn flip book. Okay, so uh, Jolo is going to sleep with you for a little bit, and then uh, we'll come back to that. We'll cycle back to that in a minute. Um, Sue, you go looking for food, and immediately you're going to encounter a like frog-looking spirit. Uh, I'm just going to disconnect. Who has a a hat on, um, and some kind of like robe, um, and he's got like a fan in his hand. And he goes, "Oh, what are you doing here, human? Uh, kind of hungry. You boy, you're a human you. boy. You're a hungry boy. Yeah, I'm a hungry boy." Come on, hungry boy. Hey, what do you got? <laughs> uh, he leads you into what looks like a a small like feast hall. Um, the bunch of like different shaped spirits. There's like a radish spirit, um, some cat looking spirits, um, and you see a whole bunch of like food on a buffet. Well, is there anything to trade for food? Uh, the only thing I have is this dagger. Oh, we'll take it. Wait, wait, wait. How much food are you giving me? As much as you can eat. Oh, perfect. Can you uh, load it up for me? Mm, that would be difficult. Well, take how do, how do you load up a, 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 an all-you-can-eat buffet? Can we bring the table over there? I'll say you can eat here for life. Upper how about that? Oh, gosh. I was really hoping I could take the food with me. Uh, I'll let you carry an armful with you when you leave. Uh, deal. And <laughs> takes dagger. the dagger. Uh, goes, oh, perfect. Puts it under his hat, <laughs> uh, and you have free access to the spirit buffet. Uh, this is Studio Ghibli style feast of spirited away. Oh, no. uh, just so much delicious looking food. Uh, the dagger is immediately gone as this person uh, just walks over to like the chefs and he goes, he eats for free forever, <laughs> and then walks out and leaves. Um, I like quickly like fill my my like jumpsuit with food. I like, rush over to the others, start like dumping out food for them. I'll make multiple trips. Yeah, that was up. That was up against your body. Heck, that's a lot of food. <laughs> no, I got a shirt underneath. <laughs> Yeah, I think that the second time you come back and you put stuff under your clothes, you just hear one of the chefs like, oh, humans are really weird putting food under their clothing. <laughs> just really excited. How we eat, we eat through our stomachs, but we have to like put it under our clothes. <laughs> you see like a shadowy figure, one kind of forward. Oh, I've never seen a human eat before. Um, you kind of jet out of there <laughs> to bring food back to everybody else. <laughs> yeah, I bring to the orphans too. Uh, so you see the orphans. Um, the orphans are like they're nearby. I think that you'd have to like ask one of the, the swamp enders, uh, and they'll just guide you to where they are. They're all resting in like a recovery type of state. Um, one second. Um, so Bayan is here, uh, which was the, the one who was healed originally. Um, and then you have Pa, Geshu, Bushan, Chor, Zunwo, Songtivo, and Tomi. Um, yes. So this is essentially pretty much the, whoop, I just made a mistake. Uh, it's like the rest of the orphans that were missing. Um, so the back Crabapede the gang is back in Sue mm -hmm. with Jib, Cha-Cha, and Leo. Uh, Lucy, Lululu, is there. Uh, mm -hmm. And she is with... Uh, hold on, I have her name. Ling? No. 
shoot. Leah. Leah. Uh, Lul- yeah, Lulu is with Leah uh, and the Cravapede gang. Uh, and Shu Fen, uh, the bright eyed girl. Yeah, I rush over to all of them. Uh, I had I had seen them before, and I had given them all like a big hug uh, before we were put into that like big council meeting. Um, so yeah, like, I'll just, them, like they were at the council meeting essentially. Okay, um, but they were like, they, they had, like heard that you were fighting outside and like came to see you like immediately. Um, so maybe you like quickly like maybe just saw them. Um, and this is the first real interaction. They all hug you. They're all like, oh my god. Wait, 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 don't squish the food. It'll like pull out like carefully like balanced bowls and uh, you don't even have to pull out the food. The hand they're already grabbing the food out from under yeah. your clothing. <laughs> they're they're like, spilling it out of grab the hug, grab hug. Um they're all laughing, smiling to see you, and then like the one of those swamp healers is like, hey, settle down, everyone. And they all have to like bring their like little armload of food that they got <laughs> uh, to their beds. Um and they're making a big mess, getting all greasy. Uh, the swamp are just like ah. Uh, she like goes and like draws some warm water from like a hearth, uh, and then like go <laughs> and like cleans their cheeks as they're eating and stuff. Uh, and they seem to be well taken care of. Um, is there anything you want to say to them? Yeah, I just want to like essentially spend the the night like resting with them. Um, uh, sure, you spend the night resting. Do you do you like tell them stories of your journey? Like they're asking, like, where have you been, Sue? Oh my uh, gosh, don't ask me that. I've been all over the place. Yeah, Bayan can't talk. He's just like, uh, <laughs> pale. It's all right. It's all right. You never were much of a talker, actually. It shakes his head. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, but then I'll you tell, hear... them, tell them the stories of, uh, of the travels through mouthfuls of food. Yeah, so you, you tell all these stories, uh, and then you get up to the point where. Um, and I got a, the town of Crescent, uh, where you went into the woods and you saw Noma. And the little Tommy is like, "What? What happened to Noma? Uh, did I say Noma? Um, well, well, uh, I'm gonna get some more food. Uh, just give me a second. I'll like get up, like rush over." get some food uh, trying to avoid the subject with them bring back some desserts <laughs> um then uh, have room for this right song tivo is just like and, and where's where's laka did you see laka on your travels at all no i don't, I don't think so we see laka there's a lot of orphans do you remember all the names of the ones I just said? No. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Jim, Chacha, and Leah because that was my like crew. Yeah, Jim, Chacha, Leah. And Lucy, actually, all the ones in Zoo I remember because I actually like had time to sit down with them. Yeah, Lucy and, and Shu Fen. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the rest are a bunch of kids who've been missing forever. Mm-hmm. Um, so here they all are. Um, you don't know where Laka is. Per se, so okay. they seem a little crestfallen that they're not, uh, you don't have all the answers. Uh, and you spend some time with them. Is there anything specific you'd like to do with them? I think Quaddle comes to see you at some point in here uh, and brings Quetzal. Uh, the Quetzal are like, Whoa, dinosaur! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they're like climbing on top of the dinosaur uh, who just like lies down and like is kind of like still. Oh, thank you. Uh, how, how you doing? I'm okay. These are the kids from that building where you and I first. Yeah, they're like cats. They're like my, my siblings. Your siblings, huh? I grew up together. I'm trying to take care of them. Feels weird that I was tracking your siblings. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. But you, uh, I mean, you you followed them, right? That's what you said? Yeah. 
Oh, thank you. I thought you were a bad guy for a really long time. You know that? I'm not even a guy. That, that's true. I thought you were a bad woman. I don't think you could tell I was a woman. I'm not that womanly. Oh, I could tell. <laughs> it's dandy, Darn. baby. Give her a little wink. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, she raises her her eyebrows a little bit, um, and I think that there's like a little mischievous spirit in the side that like starts to play like a little tune, like a, and then like another spirit like, um, and she kind of like laughs and starts to like dance with the kids a little bit, uh, and like brings you into it. <laughs> um, you guys have a little a little feast and a party uh, as you. Take a night off. Amazing. Um, I do want to know, though, as before we fade fully away from that scene, what's Sue thinking? Like, you've achieved your goal that you set out to do. Uh, he, like, this is the like. There's two missing kids. One of them is dead. Yeah. Um. I think Zoo's pretty, I mean, he wants to see it through that we like, I don't know, get the avatar as strong as he needs to be. Um, so I, he's he's pretty invested in going to the uh, you know, protecting the portal, especially because he thinks the entire group is like in on it and nobody's trying to, uh, you know, sneak away or something. But um yeah, no, I mean, he's just he's trying to see it through. So I think he's uh, he's kind of enjoying the rest, though he does feel a bit guilty about about the missing orphan and the one that, uh, well, the one that died. So he's not ready to bring that up to them. So he's just going to dance and be greasy and eat food and enjoy himself. <laughs> Uh, and as you enjoy yourself, uh, little little pa uh, looks up at you and goes, "I love you, Dad." Um, oh, little... come here! <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna let you die. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> he starts crying, uh, <laughs> and oh, we fade no. from the scene as the rest of them are like yelling and screaming and running around and having fun. Uh, with gets a little quaddle, um, and you have that cute moment. Um, So I do want to run the scene with Tome. Shen, is there anything in specific you want to be doing? Um, I actually wanted to go speak to Tome's mom, like Kai's mom after. So I'll wait till after that scene. <laughs> Just listening in. <laughs> yeah, do you, I mean, you like, you see them go off to, to train for a bit. Do you like at some point end up following them? Uh, I mean, I do want to go, f like, speak to her about, like, the just the campaign in general. So I guess I would follow just to find out, like, what's, where she's going, really, because I need to find her afterwards. Roll a push, your luck. Okay. I need to find out what I'm rolling with. Push my luck is passion. All right. Uh, don't tell us what the outcome is. We're gonna we're gonna have a conversation and run the scene, and then uh, that's to see if we thing. notice him. Uh, no, that's to see at what point he drops in on the conversation. Okay. So do I like DM you it? Uh, you can DM it to me. Yeah. Okay. Ow, sorry, I just scratched my hand. Oh, that hurts. Um, Interesting. Tome. I forgot her name again. May? May, yes. <laughs> Why, uh, I think in my head I keep saying my, and I'm like, no, yeah. that's wrong. Yeah. Um, oh, I also have like a thing that lets me learn a technique uh, from any training if I have a teacher, and I get a plus one uh, on training the move. Would that be like another fighting move? Uh, like that's, yeah, my... that's a legit fighting technique, yeah. Okay, sweet. So... Would I be able to learn one from her? 
Uh, I'll say that in this training session, you definitely can attempt to do so. So roll, uh, I believe it's a rely on your skills and training. Uh, and you can add plus one to that from your skill. So focus um, and put my plus one. Yeah. So on plus a 10 two. plus, you're able to learn it. Uh, and on a partial hit, you'd have to do this again. Okay. Uh, uh, it's a six. Um, and you can mark fatigue to use your balance instead, if you wish. Uh, like to move my balance to learn it? No, no, to... What's your balance track at now? A plus one to progress. So you could use that as well to help you. If you mark a fatigue, you can use that plus one. I don't oh, know yeah. what your focus is right now. Uh, it's plus one. So oh. uh, that pushed me to seven, and that's a partial? No, no, no. It would just replace the plus one from focus. Oh, no. Um, but the elder will push you to seven. Okay, sweet. Um, so he'll step in uh, and be like, no, like this. Um, and you feel it like guide your hand a little bit uh, in certain cases. Um, so I think go ahead and look for a technique that you want to learn um, and you learn it. All right. You'll leave uh, me up to there, me. <laughs> Yeah, but there are going to be consequences if you use this technique. Okay. Uh, essentially, the elder, the elder might have a little say in how you use a technique. All right. Beautiful. And firebending, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Sweet. I'll work on that. Um, yeah. So you talk to your mom. She says, hey, uh, there's some wild stories, but what's? I need you to repeat this whole part about an elder of the Kais? Like... Yeah, and I, I think as I like, I get that direction from the elder, and like it fixes my form. I'll say it out loud. It's like thank you, elder, uh, and we'll, we'll like kind of get it started again. The conversation too. It's like yeah, uh, um, uh, mother, I I found one of our ancestors who built this network where people seem to live forever in a fake world and he seems to be a part of me now he helps um and promises power sometimes mother and i'd be like still continuing stuff uh well this sounds too good to be true which means it probably is is he whispering evil things in your ear Telling you to, you know, take out your friends and, I don't know, steal things or not take the them out, but take back the power to maybe get all bending. <sighs> and it's just a touch away. I, it's, it, it's, it's tempting. It's... <sighs> But look, it's it's made me closer to the family. I can fire Ben now. I'll like put up a little ball in my hand. Well, I uh, for one greetings, Elder Kai. In case you can hear me, um, he you, can. <laughs> in your head, he's just like, "Thank you." He says, "Thank uh, you." <laughs> oh, well, isn't that nice? Yeah, it seems you have your own little avatar in your head, um, my boy. And she puts her hand on your cheek. Uh, Shen, you hear the part about uh, the Elder Kai living in his head uh, on the Push Your Luck. Uh, but from what you rolled, uh, which for everyone here is a seven, um, a knife comes to your throat. And Luen says, what are you doing here? Uh, came to talk to uh, the commander. Is that not possible now? Or hmm. do I make an appointment? I don't know. I kind of feel like end of the world situation here. Are you her secretary? 
Something like that. Cool. Uh, How do I okay. talk to her? <laughs> he removes the knife and pushes you uh, fully into the room. Uh, kind of like comes in, leans on the doorway behind you. Uh, no evidence of any knife in his hand. Hey, mom. And she turns and looks. Oh. oh and she really looks at you, Tommy. And she's like, did you tell your friends? Uh, no. <laughs> she looks back at Shen. And she goes, well, you didn't hear anything, did you? Of our personal conversation? Um... I mean, I was kind of just coming here to talk to you about being a general, leading people. Uh, so I kind of was in my own head. Sure. Uh, are you trying to lie to them? I didn't really. I mean, at the same point, I've kind of pieced it together already from what Kai's let slip yeah. in the group. I feel like Shen would have picked up on those things. Mm -hmm. But there's been no like outward like bad thing that's happening, so he hasn't really acted on it. But that can definitely be uh, up to a role, I don't mind. Hmm. I mean, you're not necessarily trying to trick them and like Luen just gives a look of like to you, Tome, of like you should have been more careful. Um but yes. but she'll leave it at that. She'll be like, Oh, of course I'll could talk to you about that, uh Shen. Uh Tome, I guess we're done for the night, but uh try not to follow your more basic impulses. Uh, yes, Commander. I like to bow down and get back up. Look at my brother. <laughs> and just shakes his head. Continue. I'll turn. And just continue to practice. <laughs> um, um, she motions to you, Shen. Uh, you guys can kind of like walk out, uh, and you're on a balcony overlooking the the fields before you um a little cooler a little breezy um i feel like i came at a bad time uh should i come back no it's just difficult having boys as they grow older they do more and more dangerous things um and so i try to provide what guidance i can yeah see so that's kind of a point i want to touch on um, I'm not that much older than the others, but I I kind of fell into the role of kind of being the, the the plan maker, the the person who kind of leads in a sense, and I don't know how that sits with. I don't that responsibility is a lot. Um, like, it didn't go well the first time I kind of led a project. And I don't want the same thing happening this time. I don't want the same outcome. Um, I, I, I don't know what to do to, to stop that from happening again. How do I make good decisions? How do I protect them from... Like, as you say, like making stupid decisions and hurting themselves. She nods and looks out into the night. Well, what makes someone qualified to lead? What do you think? I guess experience and know-how i mean they, they have to be able to to I guess think on their feet and be able to come up with just the best case 
plan on on what to do and to keep everyone safe and also find a way to get what they need to be done done i don't know uh it's it's a lot i'm not explaining myself properly no but it sounds like you've put quite a bit of thought into this shem a bad leader in contrast is someone who hadn't put that much thought someone who didn't care for the responsibilities that come with the position that you speak of and she looks back to you fully turns her body from what Tome has told me and from what i gather from jay brav it seems that your travels together and your you know leadership in these travels has been for the best you've been able to think you've been able to react and most importantly you've been able to care and learn you know from the experiences that you've had yeah i mean i i, I guess but I mean, I, I wouldn't have been able to do any, like almost anything without I mean, the rest of them. They're it, they're amazing benders in their own right, and they all have their own ideas that really they could they could do this themselves. I think if they if they really put their minds to it. So, uh, but. I don't know why it kind of felt to me. I don't feel like I have proper qualifications. I was appointed as one of the hands of the dragon because I felt that I could do more. I saw that there were ways that the hands could work to better what was around them, more than what was already happening. And I pushed and seized that for myself. I think in that same way, you saw a space, a gap that needed filling, and you rose to that occasion. And so there will not be a time where you are justified. There will not be a time where someone comes to say that you are redeemed. You are the one who will decide that for yourself. And I think that your companions have already chosen to put their faith into you and make that decision. I'm not sure if that answers your questions, Shen, but to me, at least, it seems that you're doing a fairly good job. I bet Chen kind of stands up a bit straighter and says, well, be that as it may, I still think I can do better. And so for that, I'd like to ask, could you teach me to become a better leader? Well, we can try. I don't mind sharing some of my knowledge with you especially if it will help the avatar and potentially my son. I, I'd appreciate it. Thanks. Well, um, have you heard of uh, leadership styles? No. <laughs> uh, and I think maybe you start to have a conversation about the... Uh, the technicalities of 
a little bit of like psychology and what it is to lead people um, and how different people react to, you know, different uh, types of plans of learning and approaches. Cool. Um, mechanically, uh, I'm going to use that if you allow me to clear one, my condition of trouble to seek guidance from, from a powerful figure. Mm -hmm. It's clear troubled. And then as the prodigy, um, if I can, if I learn when I study with like, a, well, when I kind of see a skill and train in a technique, I can move my balance towards excellence and thus kind of give me, bring me back to my new balance, my center. Hell yeah. Okay. So then that, yeah, that'll be it for me tonight. All right. Well, you guys talk into the evening. Um, my gosh. Um, I, this is the point where I would say, hey, Rufu, what's going on? Rufu, can you hear me? Rufu, can you hear me? I can, you hear I can me? absolutely hear you. I think it's just a little bit better without. I, I think so, too. There's barely a delay. We love this. Yeah, so I'll just, we'll just, I'll just chill like this for right now. Quick, get the question. Uh, yeah. I think it's more than barely. The man of this so. <laughs> the night wears on. Sherlock you knows. Sleep. Um, the accommodations here are more comfortable than you're used to. Uh, give me one second. Yeah, this is a night's rest in a comfortable space. Um, so this clears for fatigue. Okay. No conditions? You have to do what Simon just did to clear conditions. Which is uh, guide and comfort? Uh, guide and comfort or actually role play uh, and seek out opportunities to shed them. Okay. Um... Uh, that's my star for this session. <laughs> Beautiful. I'm going to... Um, in, the, in the early hours of the morning, I'm going to sneak off. To go find River, obviously. Um, as you sneak off, like, small, like, not like a dragon spirit, but like a dragon leaf thing, like a snake lizard leaf thing kind of like floats and then it like seems to lead you through some passageways. Um, and as one of them like closes behind you, you hear a shoot, um, the voice of Lu Wen as you lose him amid the maze. Um, and you come to what appears to be an underground river. And the dragon rises its head out of the water. Ah, oh, boy. You've come much later. I'll go sit on the edge and put my feet in. You would keep an old spirit waiting for you, child. I was fighting. I'm tired. I wasn't in a good space. And now you are. That's all I have to say about that. Now I feel better. Yeah, so I... I Listen, I love my brother, but I think... I don't know if I can help him, but maybe I can go and... I can help my mom, or at least I can gain some information so that when they come, we can actually do something. I'm not against this. Your humans seem torn between several different plans of attack. And I think that time runs short. The poison on this world, what you saw through Gaia, it needs to be addressed. It was horrible.
I can send you there. Sure. I'm worried I'm not enough, Joe. And I'd like I'd like that. I'd like for you to send me. Worry not, then. You will be of aid in this way. But I warn you, this is a one-way trip. If you go, you're not coming back. Not this way. Is there anything else you can do to help me? Hmm. I'll make it so that the journey is swift. I guess I'll have to do. Uh, and he... Listen, man. Uh... Sorry, you're going to say something? Yeah, I was just going to say, listen, I... I... I just, and I take out this hastily scrawled note. And it just says, I'm sorry, Joe. I had to go. Huh. That rhymed. Um, so you take out, hold out the note. Uh, he swallows you whole. Uh, uh, I give him that, and flutters, then and that little lizard yeah, what does he do? he opens up. grabs it uh, and takes it back to where everyone else is, and he plunges into the deep spirit waters of the river. You don't feel like you're in a mouth. You feel like you're underwater, and it's almost like you can feel it moving across your skin. Um, once again, I think you feel cleaner than maybe you would like as all of the sand washes <laughs> off of you. Um, the grit and dirt washes off of your clothing and items. I'm like grasping at sand as it leaves my hands. Um, you see that your clothing um, has like a pouch, like a, almost like a belt that is now on your waist. Um, in this pouch, there's the sand that came off of you uh, and what appears to be some food. Um, and from inside your tunic, you hear like a, uh, as boss uh, springs up uh, and gives you a look of yeah. sheer horror uh, <laughs> because he's been eaten. We're going on an adventure, bud. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I say through the bubbles. <laughs> amazing. Um, and psh, you come out the other side. flying into the air uh, out of a geyser on the other side of the world. Um, what do you do as you fall towards the earth? I'm going to... What's the earth look like? Uh, dusty, sandy. Oh, I'm going to just scoop myself up in some sand. First, I'm going to throw Boss so that he can fly away. And then I'll try and like scoop the sand up to catch me. So you, um, and you scoop the sand, fall into it, get all dirty immediately. <laughs> full, just full of sand in every orifice. Um, as you get up, brush the excess off, and look around. You see what looks like a landscape much closer to home. This is a desert, um, mm -hmm. but the the shrubbery, the cactuses, they're not quite right. Um, you don't see any of the like floating spirits that are usually like motes on the wind around. Um, and it is night right now. And even though it is night, there's a purple glow Cold. to the sky. Um, and as you turn to follow the glow and look into the distance, 
you see what looks to be an enormous building, uh, shiny and reflective, that uh, this like tower that goes up into the sky and in the clouds, the streaks of plasma shooting out like lightning, uh, illuminating its silvery surface. Um, and you hear the whisper of the dragon. Come back here and tell us what news. I will. Um, so the landscape, what does it look like? Are there, like, am I on a beach or I'm like... Um, You're in the middle of the land. It's cracked, hard packed earth uh, mixed with sand. Uh, okay. So there's like smallish dunes in some spots. I think that further away you can see like much more sand. Uh, but in this area... So I would, I would scout out a little bit around um, around me. And I, basically my first thing is I'm going to make shelter for myself. I'm going to make it within like probably a kilometer roughly of or or maybe half a kilometer of this uh, of this geyser. That's my first mission. So some sort of underground semi-hidden structure within like if there's any portion where there's like rocks kind of like half covered in sand or something like that that's going to be the kind of thing i'm looking for all right you make your base camp and you get ready for your scouting mission uh in the lost world um and as the day brightens and you realize that here the sun does not rise the shiny reflection of the desert around shows you that you are not alone. F there are fires that kind of spring to life and illuminate the daytime as hordes of prisoners, enslaved and shackled, uh, set to building other towers uh, in the vicinity. And as close, your eyes close by, close by um you said like within a kilometer of that geyser um you're kind of close to this tower um and the uh, the other ones are like you know they're like maybe like two kilometers away so in the dark it, it, you couldn't really see anything and everything is still and quiet uh and now that the day has come at all of a sudden many moving bodies uh dinosaurs people and did i see where they the sites have of this problem Uh, you see the kind of slums and encampments that they have, which are much different from like the beautiful polished buildings that they're building. Um, and you see uh -huh. all of these prisoners uh, with these, again, those purple glowing eyed taskmasters, uh, essentially those like ninja leader guys. Um, if you remember the one with the whips who was controlling the Spinosaurus, uh, there's tons of them here um, as uh -huh. they govern and oversee the work of their laborers. Um, that's all for this episode of Avatar Age of Bone uh, as we leave Rufu alone and God, far away yeah, I mean... and I think all of you wake yeah. up to Jolo saying hey where's Rufu does the note get delivered uh, he has a note in his hand <laughs> Yeah. I feel depressed for some reason. Um, Happy decision. <laughs> but thank you all the for watching. Uh, let's do some growth questions real quick because obviously you guys are still getting a little, little, little stronger, a little growth here. Um, did you learn something challenging, exciting, or complicated? Growth here. I'm like, uh, yep. We learned about uh, Joe and Rufu's mom. Yeah. The lost world is being yeah, uh, definitely. colonized. Yeah. Learned a lot about the Spirit Council, that's for sure. I think we learned a lot about the Spirit Council, ourselves, like what our responsibilities are. I mean, Jeff realized he's mortal bound. 
I was told specifically Mortal Bound. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think you guys stopped a dangerous threat or community problem today. I mean, Rufu solved the community problem because he went to do a mission that nobody else could do. Sure. Um, so I'll say that. that problem and we're solved. headed to the south to do a mission. <laughs> I'm not going to look, you know, a gift of the bat in the nut. <laughs> You're not going to look a gift bat in the nut? <laughs> Jeez. A gift of <laughs> uh, Did you guide a character towards balance or end the session at your center? <laughs> I did. I like pain. I do not. Those who did. Um, all right, Rufu, did you express vulnerability? I think a little bit. I don't remember exactly what I said, but I said something that I was scared. Doesn't so, feel worthy to help you. I said I was scared that I couldn't help Jolo here, that I wasn't going to be a, like a big enough help to him, and that I could, and that I thought I could help. Uh, other things. I don't, does that count for you? Hmm. I'll count it. Okay. I didn't admit that I was wrong. No. No. Right. I just expressed not it. yet. Uh. Sue, did you make progress towards your goal? Nay. I had no adversary for this sesh, so. Jet, did you improve the lives of a community of average citizens or help an ordinary person? No. Shen, did you express gratitude to a companion for their presence, support, or teaching? Mm -hmm. Not a companion? Not a companion. Kind um, of a companion. <laughs> Mama? <laughs> Cloney, did you resolve an issue or conflict relying on something other than your trainings? I don't think so. Not today. Today's a bad day for the personal questions. <laughs> Kai, did you learn something important or meaningful about your lineage? Mm -hmm. Bro is a freaking rat bat. Rat bastard. He's a snake, not a dragon. Um, alrighty. Well, quite a bit went on today. Uh, and keeping up with the schedule for Avatar, we're going to be doing this again on Thursday at 7.30. Um, and then it's only going to be one session left before we wrap it all up. How could we wrap this all up in two sessions? We'll have to find out by tuning in. Um, thank all you hexagoons for yeah. watching. Thank all you players for playing. You can find us on Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, Twitch, TikTok, and Discord, the Hexagon Tabletop Role Playing Games. Our next session is on Thursday, like I said. We're Hexagon. Uh, good night, everybody. Bye. Bye. Hexa, bye bye. Hexa, bye. <laughs>